Hello, this is Python in Excel 19.3. We're continuing delving into this irrigation data set. Last time we found that there were two subheadings in a majority, but not all, of the tables. When cleaning data, if anything goes against your assumptions, it's important to investigate why. Either something's wrong with the data, or your assumptions need to be adjusted. We found that there are six tables which don't have those subheadings. With that in mind, let's preview these six tables. The simplest way will be to filter DF raw. We'll filter the first column, that's the one with the table numbers in them, and we'll filter for those tables in this different tables list. All right, let's look at these. Table one, nothing immediately suspect about that. Here's table 177, seems okay. Wait a minute, there's a group of header rows there, but there's already a group of header rows at the top. It looks like there are actually two tables under table 177. Let's see if there are any others like that. Yep, 179's got the same problem. So let's pause a second. We were investigating one issue, the issue of tables without those subheadings, and we found another one. Multiple groups of headers within a single table. We need to get to the bottom of that, so let's dig into it a bit, because it could potentially be much more problematic. Let's grab table 177 from DF tables using get group. Okay, here's the first group of headers, and here's the second. Yep, definitely looks like there are two tables under table number 177. We need to find out which other tables have this same problem. What we need is a way to somehow identify these groups of H rows such that the first and second group are separated from each other. We can do that with shift and a cumulative sum method. Let's take a look at how it works. For simplicity, let's create a data frame with two columns, row type, which will just be column index one, and shifted, where we'll apply the shift method to column index one. This has the effect of shifting each row down one by one. See that? Different, different, different. Next, let's add a column that flags each of those different rows. We'll call it different, and it'll just be where row type is not equal to shifted. Each of those different rows are now flagged with true. Now let's add a cumulative sum of the differences. For that, we'll just take the column above and we'll apply this method to it. What this will do is it will start at row one of the different column and move through the rows one by one. And each time it finds a true, it will add one. So the first group of H rows has a two in that column and the second group of H rows has a four in that column. This is exactly what we needed. We can now differentiate these groups from each other. What we can do now is group by the header row type and count the unique values in this cumulative sum column. But first let's change the layout of this code. We'll create the data frame in the first step, then on a separate line add the different column, and then add the cumulative sum, but let's shorten the name to groups. So once that's tidied up, now we need to use df.groupby, then get the groups column and apply the nUnique method. This will give us a distinct count of groups by row type. This clearly shows us there are two H groups in table 177. We knew that from looking, but now we know it programmatically. That's the best kind. If we just add a filter to grab only the H row from this, we can just return a single integer for this one table. Now we want to apply these steps to each of the tables, so let's wrap this code in a function we can apply to the DF tables group by. To be honest, we could also modify the code to just apply it in one go to DF raw, but given the size of the data, I don't think it makes much difference either way. So let's call this function test for multi headers. It'll accept a data frame and return an integer. We just need to indent these rows, then we need to assign the last step to a variable, we'll call it result, and then return the result. Let's just test that against group two to make sure the function works as we expect. It does, good. Then what we can do is apply this function to the DF tables group by. We'll assign it to this variable count by table num. Okay, that returns every row with a lot of tables with just one group of header rows. Let's just filter that series on rows that are greater than one. Great, this is probably the best result we could have hoped for given the circumstances. It's just those two tables that have multiple groups of header rows. We just need to make a note that some alternate processing might be required for those two tables. If those two tables are needed at all, then we can move on. 
Let's hop back up to the function that processes the D rows. First, let's get this row type line and assign it to D rows. Next, let's write something to remove blank rows. We'll just use the same method as with the header rows function. If every column after the second column, which is the row type, is empty, then we can drop the row. For now, let's return that and see what we've got. Let's just take a quick look over here. So we've got this 2018 data row, and by the looks of it, every column to the right of that subheading is empty. Looks like the same is also true of the water resources regions row. Let's write something to check whether that is true of every occurrence of those subheadings in the raw data. Let's open a method chain with open paren. This will let us put steps on separate lines. Then use df raw loc and find those rows where column index 2 is in either of those values. Then from those rows, we'll grab all rows and the columns after the column containing those subheadings, so from column 3 onwards. Finally, we'll use drop na with how equals all and grab the shape of the result. If drop na successfully drops every row returned by the previous conditions, we can deduce that every row with those subheadings is blank in every column to the right of the subheading text. If shape returns zero in the first element of the tuple, we'll know that drop na has dropped every row. And there's the zero, nice! Let's hop back up to the get table data function, add a line to delete those subheading rows. Call it remove subheadings, filter remove blank rows for where column index two is either of those values. But of course this statement will return those rows and we actually want to return everything except those rows. So if we want to negate an expression, we can put a tilde before the filter to negate it. This effectively gives us a is not in instead of is in expression. Finally, let's change the return value to be that remove subheadings line, then test it on a single group. Take a quick look and yes, those subheading rows are gone. This table is starting to look a lot better now, much more compact. Still a bit more to do, but we can carry on with that in the coming days. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your support. Have fun. Don't forget to practice and have a great day.